Next, we're going to look at dividing decimals, okay? Now, it is completely different to multiplying decimals. It isn't a case of counting how many numbers are after the decimal point or anything like that, okay? So, what you have to do on these is you need to get rid of the decimal, ideally, okay? Otherwise, it's not going to... Uh, it's not going to be easy to do because if you imagine you would have 0 0.4 on the outside of your division and then 53 on the inside and that's going to be really difficult okay so what you would do is you need to get rid of it so how would we make that whole number well you would have to multiply it by something and it's always going to be either multiply by 10 100 or a thousand okay but what you've got to remember is whatever you do to this one you have to do to this one as well Okay, so to make this a whole number, I'm going to times it by 10. And I'm going to do the same to this one. So I'm just going to make the calculation 10 times bigger. So I'm going to do 530 divided by 4, which actually is much more simple. So if we do it in the traditional way, okay, how many 4s are in 5? Well, there's 1 with a remainder of 1 left over. How many 4s are in 13? There are 3. 4 3s are 12, so there's a remainder of 1. 4 into 10 goes twice with a remainder of 2. So to carry this on, I would put in a decimal and a zero and carry on. And then 4 into 20 goes five times with no remainders. So my answer is going to be 132.5. Now, the common mistake here now is that people think you've got to divide it by 10 again because I've times by 10 here. That is not the case at all. You just leave the answer as it is. And I'm going to show you how that works now. This is something that I always show my classes when I'm teaching dividing decimals. That if I've got, um, let's do 10 divided by 5 is 2. Okay? Nice and straightforward. There are two fives in 10. If I make this 10 times bigger, is it going to make my answer 10 times bigger? Well, let's have a look. So if it's 100 divided by 50, well, how many 50s are in 100? Well, there are just two. Let's make it another 10 times bigger. So I've got 1,000 divided by 500. How many 500 in 1,000? Two. So it doesn't matter how many times 10 bigger you make it, you're still going to get the exact same answer. So you don't need to do anything to this. Okay, that is the same answer as these two here. Okay, so you have a go at the questions now.